As the sun dips below the horizon, the world is painted in a beautiful, fleeting light. For a brief moment, the sky burns with orange and purple. A seemingly peaceful end to the day, but that beauty is deceptive. For many of the planet's creatures, this is the most dangerous time of all. This is the twilight hour, the world between day and night. And for the planet's most formidable hunters, the fading light isn't a challenge, it's a weapon. So, what is it about this magical hour that turns predators into such ruthlessly efficient hunters? The answer is an evolutionary masterpiece, a story written deep in their biology. This period of dawn and dusk has a name, the crepuscular hours, from the Latin word for twilight. It's a world of shadows and silhouettes, where the normal rules of day and night don't apply. For prey animals, this is a time of extreme vulnerability. Their eyes, built for the bright light of day, begin to fail them. The world dissolves into a confusing landscape of grey, where a life-saving escape route looks almost identical to the shadow of a waiting predator. Many of these prey animals are themselves most active during these hours. They might be moving to new grazing grounds or heading back to the safety of their burrows for the night. This creates a predictable rush hour of activity a feast just waiting to happen. But as they move, they're stepping into a trap set not by claws or teeth, but by the physics of light itself. The half-light that makes them nervous is the very same light that gives their hunters an almost supernatural edge. That primary advantage lies in the eyes. Many predators have a remarkable piece of biological engineering called the tapetum lucidum. In Latin, that means shining tapestry, and it's a layer of tissue sitting just behind the retina. Its job is beautifully simple. It acts like a mirror. When light enters an eye, it passes through the retina, where light-sensitive cells try to capture it. In dim conditions, many particles of light photons are missed. In our own eyes, those photons are just lost. But in an eye with a tapetum lucidum, they hit that mirror-like surface and are reflected back through the retina. This gives them a second chance to be seen, dramatically improving vision in the dark. It's exactly why a cat's or dog's eyes seem to flash or glow in a beam of light. That eerie shine is the tapetum lucidum at work. For predators like lions, leopards, and wolves, this is a complete game changer. While a zebra's vision is fading into a blurry, indistinct landscape, the lion's world is still illuminated. It may not be in sharp color, but it has more than enough clarity to pick out the shape of its prey from the bush. This creates a critical vision gap. The predator can see the prey, but the prey can't see the predator. And it's in this gap that the hunt truly takes place. While the reflection can slightly blur the predator's vision, the trade-off is more than worth it for a hunter operating in near darkness. But a predator's edge isn't just about sight. Evolution has crafted a full suite of sensory tools designed for the half-light. Hearing becomes incredibly important. The quiet of dusk is often broken by the smallest sounds of movement a twig snapping, leaves rustling. For an owl, whose hearing is so precise it can pinpoint a mouse under a layer of snow, twilight is an acoustic landscape rich with information. Smell and wine direction also play a vital role. Predators are masters of the wind, positioning themselves downwind so their scent doesn't give them away. The cooler, calmer air of dusk can make scents hang in the air longer, allowing a wolf pack to track a herd of elk over huge distances. And then there's the simple advantage of stealth. The low light of twilight creates long, deep shadows that are perfect for concealment. A leopard's spotted coat, 
which can look obvious in the midday sun, melts perfectly into the dappled light under a tree at dusk. A lion's tawny fur blends seamlessly with the dry savanna grass. This natural camouflage is made ten times more effective by the dim and certain light. Combine that with the silent movement from padded paws, and predators can get incredibly close without being noticed. This deadly ballet is on full display across the African savanna. As dusk settles, herds of zebra grow visibly agitated. They know the danger that comes with the fading light. For a lion pride, the workday is just beginning. Using their superior low light vision, they can identify a target from a distance often an old, young, or isolated animal. They move low and slow, their golden coats making them one with the grass. The zebras strain their eyes but see only shifting shadows. The hunt was won not in the final, explosive rush, but in the silent, patient stalk made possible by the gift of twilight. The leopard, a solitary hunter, uses a different strategy. It relies on ambush, often lying in wait on a low-hanging branch, its rosette coat breaking up its outline against the leaves. For an unsuspecting antelope passing below, the first sign of danger is also the last thing it ever knows. The leopard's success depends on getting unbelievably close without being detected, a feat made possible by the concealing shadows of dusk. And this isn't just happening in Africa. In North America, coyotes hunt rabbits and hares as they become active at twilight. Their compromised vision giving the keen-eyed coyote a clear advantage. Even in the frozen Arctic, harbor porpoises increase their foraging during the long, dim winters, using the darkness to hunt fish that migrate closer to the surface. Hunting at twilight isn't just about sensory advantages. It's also a brilliant strategic move. The animal kingdom is a competitive world. A predator doesn't just have to catch its food it has to keep it. For a cheetah, the fastest land animal, the hunt uses a massive amount of energy. The last thing it needs is to have its meals stolen by a stronger predator. That's why diurnal hunters like cheetahs often hunt at the very edges of the day dawn and dusk to avoid run-ins with more powerful lions and hyenas. By hunting in the quieter crepuscular hours, they can often eat in peace. There's also a very practical reason, temperature. In hot climates, hunting during the midday sun is exhausting and can lead to dangerous overheating. By being active in the cooler temperatures of dawn and dusk, predators conserve precious energy for the intense chase and kill. Twilight offers the perfect balance it's cool enough for the hunt, but there's still just enough light for a specially adapted predator to see. This principle of using low light as a weapon extends even into the largest and darkest habitat on Earth, the deep ocean. Far below the surface lies a region known as the Twilight Zone. Here, from 200 to 1,000 meters down, sunlight is a faint, ghostly blue glow. If it exists at all, life here is utterly alien, and its predators have developed some of the most extraordinary adaptations on the planet. Many, like the bristlemouth fish, use a remarkable camouflage called counterillumination. They have light-producing organs on their bellies and can adjust the brightness to match the faint sunlight filtering down from above. This effectively erases their own silhouette, making them invisible to predators looking up from the darkness below. Other predators use light not to hide, but to hunt. The famous anglerfish dangles a glowing lure in front of its mouth a hypnotic beacon that draws smaller, curious fish to their doom. Here, in the permanent twilight of the deep sea, animals create their own light in a dazzling, and often deadly, bioluminescent show. It's the ultimate expression of adapting to a low-light world. 
The story of the Twilight Hunt is a powerful reminder of the constant evolutionary arms race happening all around us. Every creature is always developing new strategies just to survive. If you find these stories of adaptation as fascinating as we do, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell. We'd love to hear from you in the comments which Twilight Predator do you find the most impressive. So, why do predators stalk their prey at twilight? It's the perfect intersection of opportunity and advantage. It's a time when prey is active, but their senses are dulled by the fading light. Meanwhile, the predator's entire evolutionary toolkit its superior vision, heightened senses, and natural camouflage is sharpened to a razor's edge. From the lion on the savannah to the anglerfish in the deep, twilight provides a window where the odds are tipped decisively in the hunter's favor. As the sun sets, the world doesn't just get darker. For those with the right adaptations, it actually becomes clearer stage perfectly set for the hunt.